1973, Benjamin Wigfall, a professor of art at SUNY New Paltz, opened Communications Village in the Punkaki neighborhood of Kingston, New York, in an old abandoned library stable. He brought in nationally recognized artists to work directly with the community in printmaking, photography, poetry, audio and video recording. As a kid, I can remember it was a, a kind of a happening place, you know, there would be artists that would come and people in the community in the neighborhood would just come on in and it was all ages. I can remember people talking to artists about why they did whatever they did in their piece of art or poetry or what have you. Having a lot of African art around um, and even having African-American artists and artists from other ethnicities also but come to CV and being exposed to that, I think it helped me see myself differently than I might have otherwise seen myself. I, I grew up in an area that was predominantly not African-American, predominantly white. And I, I understood that, that creative process is a human process. It's not just, you know, for a, a select few. I can remember growing up as a kid seeing tons and tons of African art books. Most of what people are dealing with right now is uh, this collection of African art that he has acquired for his Watermark Cargo Gallery that he ran uh, in Kingston. And so a lot of these pieces are really things that came from what he had at the gallery. I was kind of like, oh, well, you know, I got this other job, you know, working this African collection of art. And my dad was like, oh, with who? And I was like, um, it's actually Ben Wigfalls. And my dad was like, oh my God. I knew him like as a kid growing up. He always used to, you know, the church that my parents went to and the businesses that my family owned were all near where his um, museum was. Unfortunately, Ben Wigfall passed away. I got involved with working on cataloging his collection of African art. I'm just interested in African art. You know, growing up, it wasn't something that was, you know, very involved in my life. I didn't really have, you know, people in my life that did African art. So, you know, having the uh, chance to come and be a part of this experience is awesome. We started, you know, with a tour of the collection. It takes up like four rooms in this house. <laughs> And so now, right now, we're working on just um, taking pictures of the work and getting descriptions down to make a catalog. What's cool about it is like going through this African art is I'm kind of learning about the different countries that my DNA was traced back to because I got like the Congo and Mali and stuff and a lot of the art that we have here is from, you know, those same areas and tribes that I could possibly be from, so. Some of this stuff, like this isn't necessarily going to go up for auction, but it is a museum quality piece. Whatever pieces that go either up for auction or into the museum, we want it to go as a collective unit. This is kind of like the experiences that like as a person interested in art that you kind of wish to get into. And it is amazing, you know, the collection here is huge. <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty cool. <laughs> It's important to see ourselves not only as consumers of art, but also creators of art. And um, that's, that's really what he was uh, about, I think. I, you know, never had the chance to meet him, but I feel like I get to through working with this collection.